Well, it's the Christmas season, so the logical thing for someone like me to do would be to review a Christmas-themed cult movie, like Silent Night, Deadly Night, or Black Christmas, or Santa's Sleigh. But let's be honest, we all know that's not what you want. No. You want some Godzilla this Christmas. Even if, once again, that Twitter poll I had at the beginning of the year doesn't show that. I guess what they say is true, you really can't trust the polls. But if you'd like to prevent that from happening in the future, I suggest you go right here. Still, I would like to know how that happened in the first place. I'll tell you how it happened. I might have rigged your poll with some bots so that you would only have to review some shit like Korean Tron. Uh, but just remember, there's only room for one Godzilla reviewer on the internet. Later, G-Fans. Um, okay, well, I'm still reviewing another Godzilla movie. Terror of Mechagodzilla is the last film in the original Godzilla series, and is a direct sequel to the previous film, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. After years of pandering to kids, Terror of Mechagodzilla was an attempt to make a darker, more serious Godzilla film, while still retaining the more outlandish elements of the series like invading aliens and over-the-top monster battles. Ishiro Honda, who made some of the series' best-loved entries, was back in the director's chair, and some fans consider this to be the best of the 70s Godzilla films. I'm still gonna make jokes about it, of course. It's what I do. But just know that they come from a place of love. And also because it's what most of you are here to see me do. Oh, and in case you've never seen a Godzilla movie before, the movie starts by explaining his entire history. Seriously, this opening montage takes up the first 10 minutes of the movie. Nobody knows the origin of this indestructible monster. Yes, they do. He's a giant dinosaur awakened by nuclear testing or a regular-sized dinosaur mutated by nuclear testing, or a ghost of people killed in World War II, or a bunch of tadpole thingies that joined together to make Godzilla... You know what? Fuck it, you were right. So, long story short, Godzilla started as a bad guy, then he became a good guy. Actually, if you want a more detailed synopsis of the movies they're showing, just watch one of my other Godzilla videos. And apparently this was made by the Mecha Godzilla Company? Okay, if they made these movies to show off their product, they didn't do a very good job. And so Godzilla defeated Mechagodzilla, then celebrated his victory by turning him into confetti. The end. Huh? Oh, right, we're at the beginning. I think we've gone from Godzilla stock footage to deleted scenes from Latitude Zero. Okay, actually these guys are looking for Mechagodzilla's remains. The wreck of Mechagodzilla must be scattered around somewhere near here. Yeah, I'll say he's scattered. He got turned into metal flakes. Even if you do find him, what are you going to do with him? Paint a giant sports car? And as for these sub-effects, they're... actually not bad for the time this was made. Let's see, what are the odds something bad is going to happen to a submarine in a Godzilla movie? This is the movie's new monster, Titanosaurus. Titanosaurus has something of a divided reputation among G fans, with some considering him a fan favorite, and others who think his roar sounds like a bunch of kittens being run through a dishwasher. I'll let you be the judge. One thing's for sure, he definitely plays too rough with his bath toys. We then cut to Interpol's headquarters, where they're investigating the missing sub. The sub had been hit with enormous impact. It had been ripped completely apart. It wasn't an explosion? Bullshit, it wasn't an explosion. We then get introduced to our sort of main character, Ichinose, who's helping the investigation. But I don't know about this evidence they found. We'd like you to listen to this carefully. It's a recording made from the sub just before it sank. Yes. <laughs> What do you think? Headquarters! Can you hear me? Uh, I can't believe it. Why? You live in a world where Godzilla exists, and he's a dinosaur. And in the last movie, he fought a robot dinosaur built by aliens alongside an ancient poodle god. Hell, at this point, dinosaurs should be routine. 
Anyway, the aliens from the last movie are back, and they plan to destroy Tokyo so they can build Tomorrowland over it or something. Well, looks like the alien leader's neck injury from the last movie healed nicely. Actually, I think this is supposed to be a different alien leader, but considering he's played by the same actor, it's a little confusing. Anyway, the aliens decide to team up with an Earth scientist named Dr. Mafune in order to take over the world. Professor Mafune, a brilliant biologist, he planned to build submarine ranches. The plan attracted global attention and interest. And then he began new studies on how to control forms of sea life. Unfortunately, he decided to test it on mice. So the story is the scientific community didn't believe Dr. Mafuni when he told them about Titanosaurus, because I guess they forgot giant monsters are a thing in this universe. Dr. Mafuni then went mad and swore to get revenge on mankind. I don't blame him. If people in a Godzilla movie told me they don't believe in monsters, I'd be pissed too. And in another confusing bit of casting, this scientist is not the same one from the last movie, despite being played by the same actor. Okay, I get reusing actors, but could you at least change what types of characters they're playing? Interpol goes to investigate Dr. Mifune, and I gotta admit, Interpol's got some badass company cars. And hey, Dr. Mifune's looking a lot better than in his flashback. Actually, this is his daughter, Katsura, and she has some bad news about her father. Please, we would just like to talk to him. For a moment. Dr. Mafuni's dead. Judging by his flashbacks, he was killed when his fellow scientists beat the shit out of him. Well, these two didn't find anything. Maybe Rex Dart Eskimo Spy will have better luck. Of course, Dr. Mafuni's not dead. He just turned into a combination of Albert Einstein and Colonel Sanders. The Titanosaurus controller is ready. As financier of this vast undertaking, I must say I'm extremely happy. Yes, I'm extremely happy. Now let's celebrate by seeing who can get the most wine in their mustache. And I think the reason people thought Mufune was crazy is because he acts like every stereotypical mad scientist ever. I told them then I'd make them sorry. Now my theory has proved to be correct. Now take revenge on them all, on those fools who thought I was crazy and forced me to resign. <laughs> oh, but... Even Dr. Wiley would tell this guy to tone it down a little. Not only are the aliens still trying to conquer Earth, but now they've got some fresh new helmets. Oh, and they rebuilt Mechagodzilla. What on earth is it? It's the alien robot that just attacked Earth. Does everyone in this movie have amnesia? But uh-oh, looks like we have a prison break. Don't worry. No one can escape from here. That's right, no one can escape. That is, unless they're really good at hide-and-seek. Thing is, though, if you get caught, they force you to reenact the ending to Bonnie and Clyde. Meanwhile, the Interpol agents are busy working on a yellow submarine, at least until they get sued by the Beatles. But let's learn more about Titanosaurus. This notebook says Titanosaurus is gentle, rarely initiates an attack, and he is not aggressive by nature. That's strange. A gentle dinosaur. Mmm, careful, fellas. Even friendly dinosaurs can still be fucking terrifying. But this info isn't enough for Ichinose, so he meets with Katsura, who I think was about to go sledding. Mr. Ichinose, I ask you earnestly, forget Titanosaurus. Don't worry, people will. This is the only movie he's ever been in. Ichinose says they're gonna send out another submarine to look for Titanosaurus, because I guess he also has a death wish. Oh, and hide-and-seek guy from earlier? Turns out he's actually important to the plot, since he tells Interpol about the aliens. I was fixing an underground water pipe when suddenly a man rushed out of the bushes. Well, judging from the report, it was Kusagari. Is there a chance he's alive? Yeah, I seriously doubt that. Actually, considering this is the same guy from the sub at the beginning who somehow managed to survive this, fuck it, maybe he is still alive. Okay, time to check up on Mechagodzilla. Hmm, looks like his atomic robo-testicles are in order. Plus, he now has 640k of RAM installed. With your ingenuity and skill, Doctor, Mechagodzilla's a perfect robot monster. So do these aliens actually know anything about Mechagodzilla? Why do they always need a human to fix him up? And Katsura seems to be having second thoughts about this whole destroying Tokyo thing. <gasps> well, our scrawny old man security failed again, so just shoot her. At this point, we learn a terrible secret about Katsura, namely that she went through a Lolita phase when she was younger. Oh, and she got electrocuted and turned into a cyborg by the aliens. Which I guess makes her Mecha Katsura? Your heart is frozen and dry. Who'd love a cyborg? Well, according to Westworld, people will pay good money to do just that. Oh, and in the Japanese version? Yeah, only Godzilla movie to have nudity in it. Well, unless you count the monsters, of course. 
But what effect has this had on Katsura? There's only one emotion that controls your mind. What controls you? Vengeance and hate. Revenge. Are you sure it isn't boredom? We also learn Katsura is able to control Titanosaurus, and the aliens order her to get him to attack the submarine. <laughs> Ever notice Titanosaurus always sounds like someone stepping on his tail? The sub manages to get away, and I don't know what they were expecting. This went about as well as an encounter with a giant monster can go in these types of movies. Just how the hell did they escape, though? I switched on everything. One of them was the sonar, sending out a supersonic beam. You know, I thought I heard something in the previous scene. Uh, boost the sound this time. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? So, we should use supersonic beams. Yes, we should. Hey, Chief. Allow me to build a giant supersonic wave oscillator. Damn it, man, I told you we don't even have the budget to fix the coffee machine in the break room. Your oscillator thingy will just have to wait, okay? No, oh, well, maybe Ichinose's investigation of the aliens will go better. Okay, that answers that. Don't try to escape, Earthling, or you will force us to kill you. Oh shit, it's worse than I thought. The aliens are also Nazis. The aliens are thwarted when Ichinose manages to get away, but it's nothing a little bondage won't fix. Remember, fellas, the safe word is pumpernickel. Meanwhile, Ichinose catches Katsura running away from the big bad wolf, and they discuss her father's research. The dinosaur really does exist, then. Yeah, it exists. Why are you surprised by this? A giant dinosaur attacks Japan like once a year. Dr. Mifune wants to unleash Titanosaurus on Japan, which leads to probably the most confusing line in the movie. Surely you don't mean you'd release the disaster monsters again? Like King Kidra, Mighty Raiden, and Terrible Man? Wait, Dr. Mifune was controlling all those monsters? So, was he also controlling them when they fought each other? That one line just managed to destroy the entire continuity of the Godzilla series, and it already didn't make a whole lot of sense. Dr. Mifune orders Titanosaurus to attack Tokyo, and considering he's angry because people didn't believe Titanosaurus exists, you'd think just having him show up would be enough to prove his point. By the way, nice to know there's still guys directing traffic while the city's being attacked. Okay, everybody remember to evacuate in an orderly fash. You know what, fuck it, I'm out of here. Once again, I gotta give props to the guys in the monster costumes. Not many people would be willing to have explosives strapped to something they're wearing. Titanosaurus starts destroying the city, and shows off how high he can dunk. You know, I just realized we're almost an hour in, and aside from the stock footage, Godzilla hasn't even appeared in the movie yet. I gotta admit, that is one badass entrance. Okay, time for the first monster fight of the movie. This is gonna be epic. What the hell, that's it? Get back here, you pussy! Seriously, I think we get a longer action sequence with the army chasing after Katsura, and that just consists of her flashing them in the bedroom eyes and then getting shot. At this point, I think the other characters are starting to get a little suspicious of Katsura. It couldn't be Katsura. She just went and found her father's notebooks. Why not? I tell you, she's not like that. I mean, come on, she's cute. Cute people can't be evil. Oh, and don't worry about Katsura, she gets patched up. Well, here's your problem. Somebody left an erector set inside her. So, is Mechagodzilla ready yet? Mafuni. The Mechagodzilla controller is inside Katsura. Okay. Doesn't seem like a great idea to have somebody else controlling your giant killer robot. But then again, these aliens seem to know so little about Mechagodzilla, I'm convinced they didn't build him at all and just found him at a garage sale. Dr. Mifune doesn't like his daughter being a remote control for a killer robot, so the aliens decide to sweeten the deal. We will build you a beautiful new home out of the ashes of a desolated Tokyo. See? You get your revenge and a new house. It's a win-win! But Mifune still seems a little worried about his daughter, and hey, 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 watch the hands, Doc. Oh well, maybe Ichinose is having better luck finding the aliens. Man, he is bad at this. Stay there quietly and you'll witness the end of your city. Who are you anyway? They're the aliens from the previous movie. You know, for a direct sequel, this sure acts like the last movie didn't happen. The aliens get Mechagodzilla and Titanosaurus to begin their attack on Tokyo, and it looks like the Japanese army still can't aim worth shit. 
Things look pretty bad, but on the plus side, construction workers in Tokyo must never be short on work. Mechagodzilla shows off his weapons, but Titanosaurus has some tricks of his own. Yeah, that's pretty impressive, but I don't know, I guess after the Gamera movies I'm a little jaded when it comes to weird monster powers. Uh, could you maybe do something weird with your nipples? And speaking of weird powers... Revolving missiles, Mega Godzilla's new weapons. He had those in the last movie. Did the producers even watch Godzilla vs. Mega Godzilla before making this? Mega Godzilla and Titanosaurus continue their reign of terror, but there are some upsides to it. Ah! 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 Oh come on, Godzilla! He was just about to squash a couple of Kennies. Could you wait a second? This time around, Godzilla's outnumbered two to one, but wait a second, last time they called King Caesar to help Godzilla defeat Mechagodzilla. Why don't they just call him again? Okay, okay, forget it, he can fight him alone. Besides, he's Godzilla, he should be fine. Okay, maybe not. This is actually a decent final battle, but I don't like it nearly as much as the one from the last movie. It just doesn't have the punch that fight had, plus it somehow manages to be darker, yet still less violent than that fight. I also liked how over the top and ridiculous the fight in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla got. Which is not to say that this fight doesn't also have some ridiculous moments. <laughs> getting some serious Gamera flashbacks from this part. And hey, if this joke worked last time... Don't do it! Don't do it! This fight really doesn't seem to be going well for Godzilla. Not only does he get buried alive, but then Titanosaurus dances on his grave. Have you guys got that supersonic oscillator thing ready yet? Ready to fly? Alright, time to beam in a sound even Titanosaurus can't resist. Of course they still need to take care of Mechagodzilla, and is Godzilla just not in the movie anymore? With Godzilla back in the fight, Mechagodzilla shows off his real new weapon, stock footage from the last movie. And it apparently works since it sets Godzilla's back on fire. Okay, I'm gonna say this again, the guys in those suits deserve a friggin' medal for what they had to go through. Okay, Ichinose, time to prove once and for all you're not totally incompetent at your job. And the aliens apparently aren't apes this time, they're just people that have passed their expiration date and gone moldy. Maybe saving the world will be enough to impress Katsura. You can't do it. You wouldn't shoot me. You're wrong. I'm not alive. I may look like a girl, but I'm not. I'm a cyborg. Dude, what are you doing? I was this close to sealing the deal. Okay, so Katsura's out, and Godzilla knows exactly how to defeat Mechagodzilla. Decapitation! Huh? Well, at least now Mechagodzilla gets to show off a real new weapon, even if no one comments on it. But oh no, Dr. Mifune! Godzilla! Ah, poor Dr. Mifune. All he wanted to do was destroy the world because a few people laughed at him. Katsura, I still love you. You aren't to blame. None of this is your fault. It kind of is. Mechagodzilla shuts down when Katsura dies, which proves the aliens should have just made a remote for him. Alright, let's see you keep fighting after this, asshole. You were good, kid. Real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see? Alright, we still need to take care of the alien leader. Come on and shoot. You can't kill me anyways, so what do your bullets matter? Ha 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 ha! <laughs> Godzilla takes care of the remaining aliens. Now to kill Titanosaurus for allowing himself to get brainwashed. That's for burying me alive, motherfucker. And so Godzilla saved the day, and Katsura's remains were used to make the first real doll.
The End. Despite the filmmaker's best efforts, Terror of Mechagodzilla was not a success at the box office, and to this day, it remains the lowest grossing Godzilla movie of all time. The movie's box office probably wasn't helped by some confusing international releases, including this Italian one which made it look like a King Kong movie. I've shown some misleading posters on this show before, but this is really taking it to a whole nother level. Which is a shame, really, because it's not a bad movie and actually one of the best of the 70s Godzilla films. Of course, it still has its flaws. The darker elements of the plot don't always gel with the sillier ones, and personally, I still prefer Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, mainly because that movie's just more colorful and fun than this one is. Because of the movie's failure at the box office, this was the last of the original Godzilla series, and Godzilla wouldn't return to movie screens for almost a decade. But that's a story for another review. So there you go, my last Godzilla video of 2016. Will I make more Godzilla videos next year? Yeah, I, I probably will. Until next time.